Subscribe to The Honest Critique for current affairs, movie, book, and product reviews. Also, make sure you press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the video series are solely those of the individuals and do not necessarily represent those of The Honest Critique and its employees. The following video contains strong language which may be offensive to some viewers. Viewer discretion advised. So hello and welcome to a very special episode we are recording today. I am delighted to be joined by Kobe Mikhail, a senior researcher at INSS and a visiting professor at the International Centre for Policing and Security at the University of South Wales, UK. So thank you so much, Professor, for taking your time and speaking to us. Thank you for having me. So let's start uh, with the assassination of Ismail Hania. And it's important uh, to discuss about this uh, with your experience. I wanted to understand that what does it mean uh, for the uh, movement, the Hamas movement, especially with an assassination of the political bureau chief that is also happened in Tehran. It is very significant because, first of all, uh, Ismail Haniyeh is the leader of this terror organization of Hamas. Uh, so um, it is uh, very symbolic on the one hand, and uh, it is very operational on the other hand. Although we have to remember that Hamas is a very well organized organization, and uh, Haniyeh will be replaced by somebody else very soon. Uh, and this is not the first time that Israel um, kills uh, the, the head of the organization. It was with Ahmed Yassin in 2004, and immediately after that, uh, uh, Dr. Antisi, who replaced him. Um, so this is not the first time. Um, but um, it, is, it is very important, mainly uh, uh, with regard to the fact that we are in an active war against Hamas now since October 7, uh, following the, the murderous Hamas. And uh, following uh, the fact that uh, some other senior officials of Hamas were uh, killed as well. And I'm talking, of course, about Hamadev and uh, his right hand, uh, uh, Arif Salame, and some other uh, senior officials of uh, Hamas. And uh, in addition to all of that, uh, it is very uh, important and significant uh, that it happened uh, in the heart of Tehran, when Ismail Haniyeh was uh, invited officially by the Tehran, by the Iranian authorities, to the um, inauguration ceremony of the new Iranian president. And he was... Uh, secured by uh, the Iranians, and although it was secured by the Iranians, and in the heart of Tehran, in a very symbolic ceremony, he, he was targeted, and he was killed by Israel. And this is something which is very embarrassing to the Iranian authorities, and this is something that signals um, to the Iranians and to the entire region uh, about, uh, first of all, the intelligence and the operational capacities and capabilities that Israel has, and secondly, about the Israeli determination uh, to run after uh, all the leaders of Hamas, uh, never mind uh, uh, where they are located. Um, and Israel um, uh, is determined to the level that it is willing to take some risks with regard to the expansion of the war, because uh, I'm sure that the political echelon uh, took into consideration the probability that uh, Iran will retaliate or Hezbollah will retaliate um, uh, for the assassination of uh, 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 Fuad Chuko. Uh, and uh, these retaliations might uh, lead to a broader regional warfare. And uh, although uh, uh, this is something that uh, is on the table, Israel decided to do that. It means that Israel is, first of all, determined, very determined. Secondly, Israel is very confident with regard to its capabilities, with regard to its capabilities to tackle successfully any expansion of original war. 
Now, um, I think that uh, uh, it is very important that Israel very wisely uh, uh, choose the, the target with regard to Hezbollah uh, because um, Israel assured that the U.S. will remain beside Israel and will continue supporting Israel. Uh, and just this morning we heard from the Secretary of Defense uh, the American Secretary of Defense, that um, uh, the U.S. is obliged to be beside Israel and to help Israel if Israel will be attacked by the Iranians or in a case of a broader regional war. Uh, because the target that was choose, and I'm talking about uh, Fuad Shukur, uh, it was an American target as well. He has a lot of uh, American blood on his hands. He was one of the the um, the people who are responsible for uh, the killing of 241 American Marine soldiers in Beirut, and uh, he was wanted by the FBI. And uh, there was a prize of uh, five million dollars on his head. And the Americans themselves tried several times to target him and they have not succeeded in doing so. So what they can tell or what they can say to Israel that Israel targeted uh, uh, somebody who uh, uh, was wanted by the American authorities. Uh, so I think that um, in, in, uh, in summary or in the bottom line, I think that uh, we can refer to these two uh, target, uh, targeted killings as a very significant achievement of Israel. And although it will not create a sort of a strategic change in the immediate, uh, uh, in the immediate time, uh, it is an accumulation, a very, very important accumulation of achievements that in the long run will create a very significant impact. And if we just talk about the assassination of Ismail Hani a little more in detail, and I want to understand, uh, since you have covered and worked with the Palestinians a lot, so what implication does that have? Does it have any implication towards the political or military strategies of Hamas, especially when the political bureau uh, chief is killed right now since and the war is going on? What implication will it have in the long term? Yeah. Look, uh, this is not something that uh, will uh, change Hamas ideology. And this is not something that will change uh, Hamas determination to eliminate uh, and to destroy the state of Israel. But this is something that uh, eventually undermines Hamas or uh, capabilities to reorganize itself effectively, mainly when the organization is under conditions of war. And uh, we have to remember that Israel has succeeded in dismantling um, the organized formation, the organized military formation of Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And uh, actually Hamas is not capable to operate anymore in an organized military formation. They turn or transformed uh, themselves to guerrilla warfare, and even in that phase, they are not so, uh, they are not uh, doing so well. Uh, and uh, is uh, disconnected, is not able to control the organization or to operate the organization. Uh, he is in, a, uh, he is running for his life, and uh, I think that. Um, he might uh, lose the opportunity to leverage uh, the hostages' uh, deal uh, in order to assure the survival of Hamas and the uh, remaining of Hamas as a relevant actor in the Palestinian arena. And uh, therefore, I, I think that we have good, uh, good reasons to assume that uh, the assassination of the official hunter will uh, pressure Ihsin War and uh, by uh, increasing the military pressure on Hamas in the Gaza Strip, I think that he will reach to the understanding that um, 
it might be wiser for him to make some further concessions in order to have a hostage deal that will enable him to remain alive, uh, to remain alive, and to enable Hamas to remain in this way or another as a relevant uh, player in the uh, in the Palestinian arena, and uh, and uh, therefore uh, there is uh, at least theoretically a higher probability uh, for the realization of uh, the hostage deal. And if I t can take it a little forward from there and ask you of how might his death influence the internal Palestinian politics and the power between Hamas and Fatah? Do we know what his successor, who his successor will be in the long term? Um, it might uh, bring uh, Fatah and Hamas a, a bit closer, but uh, we have to remember that um, there is a sort of a zero-sum game between Hamas and Fatah, and at the end of the day, uh, they cannot coexist together. Uh, and um, I think that uh, for the very, um, very uh, short period of time, we might see a sort of uh, something which is very similar to unification, okay? Uh, but uh, not more than that. Uh, and uh, with regard to the successor of uh, Ismail Hamiya, it might be Khaled Mash'al for uh, a temporary uh, period of time, temporarily. And uh, Hamas is a very organized organization and they, they have their procedures and uh, they will uh, elect uh, a new leader. Uh, it might be Khaled Mash'al, it might be somebody, uh, somebody else. Uh, but uh, I think that any leader of Hamas understand that uh, under the current circumstances of an active war against Hamas, Israel will run after all the leaders of Hamas, uh, and it doesn't matter where they are going to be located. Uh, in the Gaza Strip, in the West Bank, in Lebanon, in uh, uh, Iran, or in any other place in the world, they will be uh, uh, persecuted by, uh, by Israel. Israel will run after them, and eventually, uh, they uh, will live under, uh, I would say, um, uh, danger, under fear, and uh, they will have to concentrate on uh, securing themselves, and uh, therefore they will not uh, be uh, too effective, I assume. I have a couple of last questions, and one of them I want to ask you is about the Iranian angle. We have seen ever since the war started uh, between Israel and Hamas, how much of Iranian support was important, either in terms of supporting the Hezbollah or in uh, support directly, even if we have seen the attacks that came a couple of months back, Iranian uh, attacks on Israel. How much of this death of Hania, especially on Iranian soil, might influence the Iranian uh, support towards either Hamas or probably direct confrontation between Israel and Hamas, uh, sorry, Israel and Iran? Do we see that in the long term? Generally speaking, the Iranian support uh, for Hamas uh, is very significant, is very crucial. Uh, the murderous uh, attack of October 7th uh, could not, uh, could not um, um, have been realized without the Iranian support. Uh, although uh, it doesn't mean that the Iran uh, necessarily um, was uh, updated were informed about the, the accurate date of the attack, but uh, Iran was deeply involved in all the preparations and the trainings towards uh, this attack, and they provided the Hamas with the technological and intelligence envelopes, they provided Hamas with military capacities, military knowledge, uh, training, uh, money, uh, and uh, therefore, the Iranian support uh, and, uh, is is very crucial uh, in this regard. Now, there is no doubt that the, Ira that the Iranians, after the the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh on Iranian soil, they will feel more obliged or more committed uh, to Hamas, and I assume that uh, they will make some uh, further efforts in order to assist Hamas. But they are very very limited because um, uh, um, 
Hamas uh, today is disconnected from the Philadelphia corridor, the border between the Gaza Strip and Egypt, and from Rafah crossing, uh, where uh, all the um, the infrastructure of uh, the smuggling tunnels beneath the Philadelphia corridor and Rafah crossing um, were used as platforms uh, for smuggling uh, weapon, ammunition, uh, money. Uh, materials, uh, people uh, to the Gaza Strip and now Hamas uh, is disconnected from uh, these platforms and uh, the only the only way that the Iranians are capable to smuggle things to the Gaza Strip are through the marine the marine time zone and the marine time zone is well uh, well secured by the Israeli Navy so uh, they will uh, they will face some severe uh, some severe uh, difficulties in uh, smuggling uh, weapons and munition and some other things to the Gaza Strip. And in addition to that, Hamas is not able to ignore such smuggling, okay? Because there's no Hamas in the form that we knew Hamas until October 7th. Um, so uh, I think that the Iranian support uh, will be seen more abroad uh, or outside the Gaza Strip than in the Gaza Strip. I think that the Iranians will continue making utmost efforts in order to smuggle weapons and money uh, from Syria, Jordan, the Jordan Valley to the West Bank in order to, um, to encourage uh, terrorism in the West Bank, okay? And to support all the terror infrastructure in the West Bank. Uh, but... Uh, Eventually, the the Iranian capacities in this regard are very limited these days, and uh, therefore I think that uh, it will remain mostly in the declarative level, not in the operational level. I mean, the Iranian support, but there is no doubt that the Iranians feel now uh, much more obliged because it happened on their soil. They have responsibility in this regard, and this is the reason that uh, this is a very big embarrassment for them. So the last thing that I want to ask you is a lot of experts I have been listening to, even from India, have been commenting that this attack on Tehran might push Israel and Iran to a regional war. And especially with the situation flaring up in the northern borders and an active front with Hamas still going on, the war still going on. Uh, do you see a regional war in the foray and how can Israel probably avoid the regional war? And if that happens, let's say a regional war, how does the U.S. position itself, especially with an election incoming? First of all, Israel and the IDF uh, are capable to um, to um, to be engaged in a multi-front war, even in a in a broader scale. Okay, uh, the IDF is not limited uh, only to one front. Uh, it is not uh, our uh, preferable option, but if we we'll be uh, if we we will be forced to do that, then we will do that. Um, the IDF is big and strong enough in order to tackle uh, such challenge. Um, secondly, uh, if the Iranians will be directly involved in such a war, then the Americans will be in the picture, regardless of the elections in the United States. I mean, the elections in the United States have no significance in this regard. This is, um, I would say, um, a sort of a strategic military security issue uh, that uh, America is committed to, uh, that America is obliged to, and uh, America will be uh, forced in this way or another uh, to be involved uh, militarily because uh, if there will be such a war, a broader war, then uh, American assets here in the broader Middle East will be attacked as well. And uh, they will have to defend their assets here, uh, but not only the pure American assets, but some other American assets like the State of Israel, which is the most important and close ally that Israel has here in the Middle East. Um, and uh, I think that... Uh, if the Iranians uh, will decide to be actively involved and in a very broad scale, then they will find uh, uh, in front of them the Americans uh, beside the Israelis. 
well uh, that's all the question that i had uh, professor thank you so much for taking your time and speaking to us thank you very much